Is Labour too soft on benefits claimants? 0207862222 is the number. Working Pensions Secretary Liz Kendall says she wants to end the focus on policing benefits and stop blaming people who claim them. She accused the former Tory government of using divisive language instead of offering support. Ms Kendall acknowledged that rising welfare costs are unsustainable, but in an interview with The Observer, she told out-of-work Brits, I want to say we're on your side. We're not going to write you off and blame you. We're going to bust a gut to give you the support you need to build a better life. Her comments come after Keir Starmer was told on last week's front pages to get a grip of the work crisis. New stats show nearly nine and a half million working age Brits are not in a job and are either not looking for one or are unable to work, including a near record 2.8 million people with long term sickness. Um, Peter. Uh, does Labour need to talk tougher and act tougher to get people off benefits? Well, talk's cheap. Reaching out to people who have got into a spiral or a cycle of living on benefits is going to be somewhat more expensive, I would say, but is what is actually needed. I went to a retirement do for a couple of friends of mine who were both teachers a couple of weeks ago, and it was astonishing engaging with so many teachers who were telling the story of parents in school saying to their children, don't worry about school, you'll get benefits. Just encouraging a lifestyle of that whole reliance upon benefits, which is so gloomy. That's anecdotal, and need, though, isn't it? And, and needs that's to be broken. I trust my friends, they tell the truth. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it's really an idea of carrot or stick, this, isn't it? It's like whether you, like... Um, Liz Kendall does. He's putting an arm around people's shoulders and saying, look, we're going to help you get there. Um, is that going to work for everybody, do you think? Probably not, but I, and I really don't mind that arm around the shoulders. I really don't mind the carrot. But people need to be aware that if all reasonable steps are taken by the state to get somebody back into work and they still refuse, then I'm afraid the stick needs to remain in the other hand. I think it's always worth saying, you know, whenever we talk about benefits, the vast majority of people who receive benefits work. Mm -hmm. OK, so that divide, just saying that people on benefits don't work, we ought to clear that up, I think, yeah. we, before we go any further. Um, Marina, is, is this the wrong message right now? If you want to get people back into work, you can't ignore the ultimate incentive is to say, look, we're, we're going to take away what you're getting without needing to work. Look, we've had this with the Conservative government. We've had this approach where it's all punitive and they're vilified. And what have we had? What, what is the result of it? The, the biggest number, the, the last parliament saw the biggest number of economically inactive people. So all of that vilifying and using it as a device to try and divide us doesn't work. And also, if you've ever been on the receiving end, personally, like, if someone's telling me I'm useless, if someone's, you're, you're a failure, you're this, you're that, you're a scrounger, like, it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think this approach, yeah, it's a bit softy, you know, the, you know wishy like soft and touchy, whatever. But actually, sometimes I think it's a better approach because... Also, you've got to bear in mind the social contract is broken. We've got stagnant wages since 2006. Work doesn't pay. You are, the, the system we've got at the moment is punitive, so that if you work above, above a certain amount of hours, you get benefits taken away from you. That all just needs to be reformed. And so I think this is a really good start point because they're actually looking... What Liz Kendall's looking to do here is... Job centres at the moment spend so much of their time monitoring, like, are you do, are you getting, should you be getting your payments, you know, and actually withdrawing or holding or whatever. Job centres, and they're linking it up with the careers advice service, which I think is a great move, and also with the NHS. It's about supporting you into roles. What skills do you need? What training do you need? What apprenticeships do you need? What is it in health-wise that's stopping you from getting that job? Linking you up with that. Because so many people, again, that 9.4 million that's quoted as being economically inactive, you can already just get rid of 5 million of those because they're students, they're carers, they're people who are sick, disabled. I think it's the rest. I think it's about the 4 million and we need to figure out what is it? Is it this spiral that Peter was talking about, that it's like a, become a lifestyle choice, which is really sad. And for those people, we need to motivate them 
going, hey, we're going to help you. This is what you're going to do. We're going to motivate you and we're going to make sure there are jobs for you that can give you progression. Do you believe what Peter's saying, that there is a generational... You know, there are people who generationally have said, no, this is our lifestyle. We will stay on benefits. 100% and it's really sad, but I do... Of course, I believe they are in the minority, but there are always going to be people who are feckless okay. and they don't want to work and they and again but what is the point if you're going to work you're eking out a living doing a job that you hate that's got no career prospects to only just about exist then I understand why they might feel like that and so that we need to address as well I mean this feels it, Peter is this not just an extension of what we were hearing from Lisa and Andy the cultural secretary saying the culture wars are over okay that we're not gonna have the culture wars anymore and this was part of the what we saw that you know people on benefits are demonized and and vilified because they receive benefits and late that's quite refreshing isn't it for labor to say hold on let's just stop that let's look at what we've got and what people need and just break it down I don't like broad brush terms being applied to people like the Prime Minister's done recently with labelling many, many people far right. I don't like people being labelled as shirkers and skivers and the such like because there is always nuance. There is always some kind of person to whom that title doesn't apply and it can disincentivise people. I quite agree that we need to follow Keir Starmer's words when he said earlier this year the principle is those that can work should work. I also agree a dead-end job that has no possibility of promotion or enhancing your wages can be very dispiriting. But on the flip side, it's always easier to find a job when you've got a job, because that looks great on the CV. OK. Um, we're going to take uh, as many calls as we can for this. Peter's in Wolverhampton. Peter, do you think that Labour is being too soft on people that claim benefits? I don't think they've got started yet. I think when the budget comes and when this consultation on disability is actually rolled out, I think they're going to get very tough. What makes you say that? Well, because Liz Kendall has made it clear that she wants to carry through a lot of the Tory uh, plans for benefits, and it's scaring a lot of disabled people. For example, this idea of introducing vouchers for disability, so instead of having money to live on, you actually have to buy, you know, a climbing frame or something with a £20 voucher instead of having enough money. So why would Liz Kendall start with this message then and say that, you know, we've got your back, we're going to support you? Well, I think Labour's trying to ride two horses at the same time. It's trying to look more progressive, but at the same time, it's got quite a big stick behind the scene. OK, so you actually feel that, what, this is softening the blow when it eventually comes? Well, we'll have to wait for the budget and the consultation, but if you ask disabled people, a lot of them are very scared that they're going to experience cuts. Yeah. What's your situation, Peter? Well, I'm on disability benefits. I was a lecturer, but I had to retire through depression and I've been on disability benefits for 10 years. And I'm quite scared that if, if you actually start introducing vouchers and cuts and pressuring people into work, it's just very frightening. It disturbs you, you know. But, the, uh, I mean, what she's saying is directed at people like yourself and, and saying, look, we are going to see the nuance, see the difference in people's situation and not, and not blame them for the situation you're in. But that's not washing with you. Well, I would love to do a bit of work, but I don't. But you see, the way it works is, if you do a couple of hours, you, you lose all your benefits at the moment. So if they're going to do that, it's going to take a huge reform to enable you to keep some money as well as work. You know. Do you feel like there are jobs that you could do with the right support, even with the situation with your depression that you've got? Well, I could work from home for a few hours a week, but I wouldn't want to have to keep being tested every week to see whether I, I should lose all my income. That's been the jeopardy over the last 10 years. Yeah, Peter, I mean, that's, that's a real... That's the reality of the situation is the structure of benefits as we have them at the moment means that Peter that we were speaking to there is discouraged from working and is frightened that he'll lose the situation he's got. A bright... An educated man, he clearly is. He works as a university lecturer. I'd like to be a brain cell or three behind him, that's for sure. But what we need... He's been out of work for ten years, so things can become ingrained, behaviours and such like, and attitudes. That's exactly the kind of person 
I would like to see reached out to, encouraged. I am sure there is so much that Peter can contribute to this country if we get him to a point where he feels he can do 30, 35 hours a week, full-time employment, whether that be at home, whether that be elsewhere. Peter would feel better in himself, I'm sure. I should perhaps not speak for him, but I know, because I've had periods out of work when I've been unwell. And when you get back to work, oh boy, great for the soul, great for the body, great for the economy, great for the bank balance. Work is a really good thing. Yeah, and, um, you know, Peter's group, if you like, the long-term, um, those with long-term sicknesses, they make up 2.8 million. So whatever approach there is to help those people um, back into work, whether it's carrot or stick, um, could make a big difference to them and to all of us. Um, thank you, Peter. Marina, thank you, Peter. And. Uh...